everyone and welcome to this evening's time of worship. Tonight is going to be a little bit different. Um, next Sunday evening we'll be back to the usual format of a service of worship, reflection and prayer with a lot more opportunity to sing together. But for tonight we're going to have um, just um, a bit more of a, a gentle service, just giving us the opportunity to consider um, God's laws and the Bible as I speak to us about um, those things and after that we're going to have opportunity to pray together um, into our vision as a church as we understand it at this time even as we look forward to learning more of that in the new year. First of all though we're just going to still our hearts before the Lord as we um, watch some worship that's provided for us by another source this evening.
reading is from Psalm 119, beginning to read at verse 89. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. Save me, for I am yours. I have sought out your precepts. The wicked are waiting to destroy me, but I will ponder your statutes. To all perfection I see a limit, but your commands are boundless. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path, so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, I humbly pray that for your glory and by the power of your Holy Spirit, you'd speak to each of us for the words that are said now. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Last Sunday evening, Graham brought God's word to us from Psalm 33, and we explored together that as followers of Jesus, our hope in these days that we're living through is to be set on God. Graham finished by sharing a famous quote about how as Christians, no matter what we go through, our cup is neither half empty or half full, but runneth over. And this evening we'll build on this and think about the key source we go to in order to be nourished for our discipleship, that is the Bible. I saw this evening that Rogers read a section of Psalm 119. It's all about the laws of the Lord. But when we think about that idea of laws, it may not sound all that inspiring. Laws, rules, regulations, standards, these things may not sound very rich, very vibrant, interesting or infusing. For example, we might reflect on experiences that we've had at school or work, or we might recall times when we've broken rules and face the consequences. Yet the laws that David, the writer of Psalms, is talking about here in Psalm 119, they're bound up with wisdom. Just as God has made everything, his mighty laws are the foundation of everything too. God knows exactly how we're designed to live in this world in relation to him and one another because he made us. Think about our mobile phones. If they break, unless we're actually a mobile phone technician and know the make and the model of, uh, of the phone and all of its workings, we won't know how to repair it. And so it is with us. We can experience struggles at times in our lives because of the choices that we make that aren't in line with God's best plans for us. When this happens, we need to return to God and tell him about it and receive his forgiveness and healing, having acknowledged our great need for him to remake us. I focus for the rest of this message this evening on the abundant blessing that comes from choosing to follow God's laws. As we continue through this time of the pandemic, we can see that others around us, Christians as well as others too, are experiencing stresses and tension. We know that at such times of stress and tension, there's a greater temptation to seek to escape by turning to excess watching too much TV or playing computer games too long, eating too much sugar or drinking too much. 
are all such escapism like this it will never ultimately help us though because it will leave us with those feelings of guilt feeling that we're trapped in a cycle thankfully we each have a choice as followers of Jesus to tell ourselves about the life and the joy that is found in heeding God's ways what's more we can grow in confidence little by little to be able to tell others about the difference that this can make to their lives too and in doing that we're starting um, to, to show them that they can see that there is a different journey that they can go on we're inviting them to see the person that God has designed them to be from before the creation of the world. Looking more closely at the verses of Psalm 119 that we're engaging with this evening about God's laws, David declares in verse 89, Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. And in verse 93, I will never forget your precepts, another word for laws, for by them you have preserved my life. And then a little further on in verse 97, we see David express his real passion for God's laws. He says, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. And then in verses 98 to 104, we understand why it is that David came to feel this way about God's laws revealed in his steadfast words. David loved God's laws because through them he gained wisdom, because God's laws made him gain more understanding than his teachers ever did, and because of his obedience to God's laws. I'll now explain a little bit more. So first, David gained wisdom. He talks in verse 98 about God's commands making him wiser than his enemies. This is important for us to consider because Jesus told his very first disciples that in following him, they would experience opposition and people wanting to make life more difficult for them. In John 15 verses 18 to 19, we read that Jesus said this, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. The amazing truth is that whatever we face, though, by filling our minds and our hearts with God's words that are given to us in the Bible, we can be empowered to know how it is that we should respond to anyone who wants to oppose us, make trouble for us, or just cause life to be generally difficult, whether it be at school or work or wherever. A famous example of someone who dedicatedly took in God's word in Psalm 119 specifically is a Christian politician who campaigned together with others for the end of the slave trade in which British and other European ships carried people from Africa in terrible conditions to the West Indies as goods to be bought and sold. As many will be aware, Wilberforce was persuaded to lobby for the abolition of the slave trade and for 18 years he regularly introduced anti-slavery motions in Parliament. Throughout this time he recited Psalm 119 and as is recorded in history, just three days before his death in 1833 the Act was passed to free all slaves in the British Empire. By changing Wilberforce, we can say then that God used Psalm 119 to bring about a manifestation of his own laws in this world. A statement that even still now today we need to be empowered by God's word to uphold, and that is that every person matters. And with this year's tragic event of the death of George Floyd, we remember our Christian calling to delight in upholding the truth that black people in our communities are made, like all other members of our communities, to be precious in the sight of God. Next we see that David loves God's laws because they gave him more understanding than his teachers did. 
And reflecting on this, I'm so aware of my own personal approach to preparing sermons and reflections. I'm aware, very acutely so, that I just want to depend on God. I want to ask him to make me a vessel. I want the real teacher to be the true and the living God. I know fully that apart from God breaking through, there isn't anything that I can say that will ever be of any worth. And this is why I'd always say to any Christian or anyone inquiring into whether Jesus is real today, don't ever just take the preacher's word for it. Explore for yourself. Explore the words of the Bible. Ask God to show you. Ask the Holy Spirit to open the words of the Bible up to you. And we can all do this. We can all grow in our reading of the scriptures. We can all grow in our love of the Bible. If we're in any doubt about this, we only need to think about the words of William Tyndale, who translated the Bible into English. He said, A ploughboy with the Bible would know more about God than a most learned scholar who paid no attention to it. So this week, let's respond to the challenge to go further with the Bible than we've been before. Let's ask God, what would be the next step for me to be developing my understanding of what the Bible's about? And how the Bible can show me so much about you, Lord. And then last, we realise by looking at verse 100 of the psalm that David loved God's laws because of his own obedience to them. Through following what God wanted, David experienced blessing, and so can we. Applying this simple truth to our current experience of COVID-19, we can be inspired to see that God's plans to bless us are not on hold, because the Bible is always there. As a result of our obedience now, not just in the future, we can enter into the blessings of God's peace and know his courage to persevere. At St James's Church building this morning, we had our annual church meeting, or APCM as it's more formally called, and this was an opportunity for the church family to reflect on what's been happening over the past year and a half including how they've been blessed massively and how they've grown during the time of not having a vicar serving with them. And then to consider what's been happening since I've arrived and to also then pray blessing over those who take part in the leadership of the church. We recognised the power of blessing. And with this in mind, we'll now go into a time of contemplative prayer we're going to recognise in the space that this time gives us at the start of a new year of our church's trustees meetings that we are to decide at every stage to ask God to lead us by the power of his Holy Spirit and to ground us in his words in the Bible. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you that we live in a country where we have free access to your words in the Bible. We thank you that each time we come to read the Bible with openness to your Spirit, or to reveal things to us, we can gain wisdom, understanding and learn the joy that comes from following all that you would have us to do. And so we pray now, mindful of the five areas that you've put on St James's heart to invest in. We pray firstly for our worship of you. We pray that we would be encouraged to know that even though we're unable to sing in church at this time, we can still grow in our worship of you in these days. We can sing as we join together in our online services. We can enjoy more exuberant worship even dancing at home. We can develop our worship because at its core, our worship has to do with the orientation of our hearts, where we're directing our praise and our adoration. Next, we pray for our learning as we come together at church, online or in our small groups. Lord, 
Would you open our minds and affect our hearts that we would make the most of every opportunity to learn more about you and the ways of your kingdom, God? And then we pray too, Lord, thanking you that you have made us to all be unique, that though we are each different, younger, older, from different backgrounds, you have made us to be one in you, to rejoice that you gather your people as church into your glorious kingdom. And then, Father God, we also bring to you our desire to share you with others, that, Lord, we will share in relational ways the difference that you have made to us. Release our tongues, God, that whatever setting we're in, we will be able to admit that we belong to you, to acknowledge to others that we belong to you. Lord, bless us with courage. May that joy overflow to those around us. And finally, we pray this evening about our final priority, which is by no means least to serve others within our local communities. Lord, as we seek to serve others through acts of service and kindness, would you help us to develop a real connection, Lord, with each person that you would have us to have relationship with that we would not hold back. We pray, Lord, for your blessings on each one of the schools in the parish. We pray, Lord, your protection over them, particularly this half-term week. And Lord, we think too of the Lamp Food Bank and pray that with that too, you would give us opportunities to build increasingly meaningful relationships. And finally, we pray, Father, for ourselves in all of this. And I'll lead us in considering the words of today's collect prayer. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us to so hear them, to read them, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. But through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A final prayer of blessing. May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you this evening and remain with you always. Amen.